Six periods a day for four years. Get a high school diploma, go to college, get a job. Well, that's what education looks like to a lot of us, but it's just one of many roads through which high school can prepare you for the workforce. So tonight we've gathered education and community leaders to explore alternate pathways to graduation and beyond. Career academies, second chance programs, technological aids, and more on WFSU's American Graduate Community Town Hall. American Graduate Community Town Halls are part of American Graduate Let's Make It Happen, a public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. For many students, the road to high school graduation is full of obstacles, and many of them can seem impossible to overcome. Growing in the house I grew in, I have four other brothers and two other sisters and they didn't finish school. I have a daughter, so I had to focus on school and my daughter, so it was a lot on me, but I did it. The path I was heading towards was either dead or in jail, so I didn't want to be either one. <laughs> so, you know, I decided to buckle down and graduate. Now, those students were able to obtain a diploma with help from the Success Academy in Leon County. They, like many others, have found success using alternative paths to graduation. Now, creating more of these pathways is a priority at both the local and the state level. It's my distinct honor if you uh, to sign the bill. Governor Rick Scott signed Senate Bill 1076 into law on April 22nd. Every time I go to a school and I talk to students, what do they want? They want a job. I want to become a mechanical engineer. I want to be a psychologist. Psychology, clinical psychology. A doctor or like a math teacher. For Senate President Don Gates, his priority was an expansion of the career and technical education initiative that he spearheaded several years ago. It's called CAPE Academies. The goal is for Florida's education system to equip graduates with job-ready skills. It makes sure that we embed into our curriculum those job skills and those attributes that are necessary for students to walk off the graduation stage and get real jobs in the real economy. Throughout the legislative session, Senate Bill 1076 was described as an effort to link the economic world with education. However, some senators raised concern that the bill could actually make it more difficult for graduates who may need to change careers in the future. Uh, while I, I understand the concept behind the bill and I, encur I encourage good job training, I think we're much better off with a, with a, a, a wide breadth of education, uh, allowing our students to get an education in many different subjects and be prepared for that workforce in the future where they may not always be staying in the career that they start in. I love the Career Academy. It's, it's opened so many doors. When I came to high school, I didn't expect my education to kind of skyrocket like it has. Marcus Lockwood is one of the many students in the Academy of Information Technology, located at Godby High School in Leon County. When I first got here and I was starting to earn certifications, it made me happy. And then when I started getting offered more opportunities to take certifications, that just made it even better. That young gentleman we just saw in the video is also here live with us in the studio, and he is Marcus Lockwood, a uh, senior at Godby now, right? Yes, sir. And uh, you have been in the IT Career mm -hmm. Academy, and, and Marcus, really, how do you think that's helped? Um, the Career Academy, Career Academy has definitely helped me a lot to, you know, spread my horizons. So now I'm not only focusing on just getting through high school, I'm also focusing on building myself for a career. And what do you hope that career to be? I really want to be an engineer and be able to make my own computers one day, be the next Steve Jobs maybe. It's a little bit, it's big shoes to fill, but you know, I, I feel like with the right education, with the right help, I feel like I can, I can definitely be there. Well, you also did something really cool because you're an intern over at the High Magnetic Field Laboratory. I mean, this is world class. Scientists from all over the world almost kill to get there, and you were over there, right? Yes, sir. I, um, I actually worked in the machine shop. I was helping make some of the parts that was used in the um, magnets. I 
from everything from the coils to maybe we needed to make another handle so the magnet would work right. You know, just those types of things. I was exposed to, you know, the different science aspects. So many smart people gathered in one place. It was just a definite, it was a good learning experience. Marcus, all the best to you. It sounds like you're well on your way, man. Thank you so much. Let's bring into the discussion one of Marcus's teachers here, uh, Demetrius uh, Rice. Uh, Demetrius, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Here, come on over. Right there, there we go. Okay. How do you think a program like the IT Career Academy helps folks, not only like Marcus, but, but other students uh, that you teach? The, the IT program puts um, a lot of the information that they get in their basic math class in their English class in the context. So there's writing involved, there's math involved, but now they're using it and they're applying it to a, a real world project. So the kids are, they, they stay motivated. Yeah. Okay, and, but you think that even if there is no great interest, maybe even in IT itself, just the fact that the academy exists, do you think that that's, a, that's also a motivator for the students? It's a motivation because no matter what career field they head into, we're, we're at a, a point in time where technology dominates our society. So that is the, the center of all of our academy programs is the technology. So you're going to be exposed to Microsoft Office and then maybe some additional programs. If the kid is not interested in IT and they may go off into the fashion world, they're still going to be exposed to some type of technology. And that's what the academies provide. Okay, because we all have to know how to use our phones and our iPads and everything else, That's right? correct. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yes, really sir. appreciate Demetrius. Uh, kind of riding herd on this from the angle of the, the supervisor of the IT Career Academy at uh, Godby High School in Tallahassee is the principal of Godby, Shelley Bell, who is with us again tonight. And we wanted to ask you just, uh, does this give, do you think, Godby kind of a, a leg up in the, in the overall makeup of the uh, options and the alternatives that are available to students? I think what it does is we're lucky to have three different academies. We have finance, IT, and then engineering. And it, it like, uh, Demetrius said it's really exposing students to real world application, whether it's with engineering, we have students preparing taxes, um, video editing, and it's just unique because it's really keeping them motivated to do well, not only in their academy classes, but in all of their classes, because start of the, so many of them are starting to see a future beyond high school. They're starting to career plan, they're starting to look at post-secondary education, and what career paths their foundations in high school will lead them down. Is it a fear, though, the emphasis on career academies, uh, these, these specialized alternatives, taking away from traditional subjects, the math and, and the reading and all that thing? No, we still have all that. We still have, you know, the, the AP options, the honors curriculum, the dual enrollment. This is just adding to that. And, and you think it helps? I think it helps, absolutely. Thanks so much for coming and for what you folks are doing at Godby. Just an example of what's going on right now with career academies throughout Leon County and many counties throughout the state of Florida. As we saw in the video, this is, this is now a statewide initiative. By the way, if you are just joining us, you're listening to a, a simulcast and viewing a simulcast of our American graduate town hall on WFSU-TV and WFSU-FM. Um, something else that we need to tell you about is that you can become part of the conversation as well. We are taking your live tweets and other commentary through uh, WFSU and grad that is on Twitter. So let us know what your thoughts, your concerns, any ideas that you may have to bring into this conversation on how we can maximize the number of students that actually get all the way through high school and get that ever important diploma that uh, that we all need today how many jobs are there and this this entire crowd can talk about that how many jobs today are available to folks who do not have a high school diploma can anyone think of five five jobs out there that do not require a high school diploma it sounds like it's a universal requirement nowadays so Let's go back to the Career Academy thing. We, we heard about the three Career Academies available at Godby High School. Are there any other academies of note that we would like to talk about tonight that provide alternatives to students in Leon County and beyond? Come on, there are more Career Academies than, than just those. Let's get to 
Reginald James, who is the uh, superintendent over in Gadsden County. Thanks for coming, sir. What academies do you have? Well, we have a, a very unique academy in Gadsden County, East and West. We have a leadership and law academy that allows students to leave high school and be prepared to be correctional officers or unarmed or armed security guards. And so that's one that's very unique, and we're very proud to have it in Gadsden. It's part of the Law Enforcement Academy at Pat Thomas Law Enforcement Academy there. And, and how long has that been, uh, been in place? It's been there about four years, and it's a program that uh, we're very proud of. We've had a lot of graduates come out and have some success and becoming correctional officers. And, you know, it pays, you know, almost $30,000 right out of high school. So we think it inspires a lot of kids to want to, you know, really pursue high school and get their diploma. So I think it does everything that that we're trying to do for our high school students. Okay, Superintendent Bobby Pierce from uh, Wakulla County with us. Any of these you have, sir? Uh, the Medical Academy for us in, in Wakulla County has been the uh, the gym that we've created down there. And we set a situation up now with a team of teachers where, just like Miss Bell was saying, they're gonna get the same subjects, but they're gonna be working with a team of teachers that are focused on the Medical Academy. And our goal is to provide them an opportunity to pass the certified nursing exam before they graduate so that they're ready then to go out and go to work immediately after they leave with that certificate. Okay, and those are jobs that are readily available right now. The medical profession's have. wide open. The other thing that we just started this year is a new engineering academy. And through the STEM uh, initiative, we're working there and doing the same thing on the same format. Okay, very good. And, uh, and finally, uh, Jackie Pons from Leon County. Any other academies, sir? Well, Griffin Middle School has a great IT program that's recognized around the state. And, and I think the CAPE Act that was put in place by Senator Gates, Senator Mumford, Senator Legg, is the most significant piece of legislation that's been passed in probably the last five years because what we're doing is we're focusing on career opportunities for our students so they can get ready to be successful in the workforce. We're getting them ready to earn a living and to maybe even earn a living in, living in the community that they live in by lining up the workforce opportunities for our students right away. So I think it's real important. I think you're gonna see it expand in the future throughout this state. Okay, any questions for the three superintendents who have joined us tonight from Wakulla, Gadsden, and Leon counties? Because we'll come back to that here. Just get, mull that over. Give it some thought. Superintendent Pons, you had mentioned a particular middle school here in Leon County. What a beautiful segue. It is called Griffin Middle School. It has an IT academy. Latoya Montgomery is the teacher of that particular, um, the supervisor, or the coordinator of it. Okay, come on up here, Latoya, and let's talk a little bit just about what the Career Academy over at uh, Griffin Middle School here in Tallahassee is. Well, Griffin Middle School offers the CAPE Academy, the IT and AP Magnet programs, and the CAPE Academy is a wonderful addition because it gives those students an opportunity who are not level three, fours, and fives on the FCAT, an opportunity to find their niche. They're able to dig into the technology, um, get certifications in Microsoft Office, Excel, Word, um, and they've enjoyed it thoroughly. You're talking middle school though, isn't that a little early for all this? It is, but we have a student here with us tonight, China, who received her first certification on yesterday. Really? Let, let's, let's talk to China here. Let's see, can we, can we get the shot over here? Uh, China, your last name? Right. Okay, and tell us about your certification. What, what does that mean? It means that when I get older, I'll be able to get a job when I get older if I want to do technology in a certain program. So I will already know how to do it in Word, Microsoft, Excel, um, PowerPoint to help me out if I need to um, get a certain application. Okay, what grade are you in at, uh, at Griffin? Eighth grade. Eighth grade, okay. Kind of early on, but what would you like to do? I would like to become a doctor when I'm older and also go to Stanford University after I get out of high school. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Thank you, China. Appreciate that. The principal of Griffin Middle School, Gwendolyn Thomas, here with us. Come on up, Gwendolyn. Sure. And let's, let's, let's do the, uh, the 30,000 foot overview here. What does that mean to Griffin Middle School having this kind of capability? Well, one thing it does for Griffin is it gives us a niche to work with digital learners. Our children are coming in with a love for technology. And so our whole theme at Griffin is to enhance academics through the use of technology. Having this program gives us an opportunity to help students create a skill set that they can take into the job market. And not only that, our theme for them is career ready for all, college ready for some. And so we breathe that into them and they are really enjoying it. It's enhancing our program tremendously. 
I, I happened to be over there not too long ago, and the yeah. kids looked excited and they were pumped and really ready to go on this. Definitely. Griffin also feeds directly into the Amos P. Godby program. We are part of what's called the Thorpe Street Corridor, and Superintendent Pons, our visionary superintendent, has established it such that we have an elementary school that feeds into the middle school. The middle school feeds into the high school, which gives a career path for them. It's not just... Um, five years or three years or four years. It's a path that these students are taking and they can take that and go uh, directly into the job market. So it really is an exciting um, venture to be a part of. And this, this is all a new territory for schools to have that kind of almost specialization. It's a new territory. Griffin actually served as a model school during the 12-13 school year. We were designated as an IT magnet school about four years ago by the Florida Department of Education. And so being a part of this cutting edge and this grassroots effort with our young students is very excited. It's something that the world is watching. And it's, it's really good and neat to be a part of that. Yeah, it is it is wonderful territory. Gwen, thank you so much thank for joining you. us tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you would like to tweet, you are encouraged to do so because we want to encourage our viewers and our listeners to uh, join us via Twitter at WFSU AmGrad as we continue our American Graduate Town Hall meeting here on WFSU TV and also WFSU FM because we are simulcasting a very important topic for all of us. We, I remember that when I was growing up, that uh, to get a good job, get a good education. And it seemed as though just about every radio and TV station that you would encounter was running those PSAs almost relentlessly and drilling it into our heads that you just could not achieve anything in the world of work unless you had a good educational backdrop. But even in the 50s and 60s, there seemed to be a problem with high school dropouts, except many of them could get jobs. And as we already indicated earlier, there aren't any jobs of any consequence or any number right now that the kids without diplomas can get. Well, we have another uh, guest here who joins us here, Rosie Wood. You were principal at Sale. Come on up, Rosie, and join us here. You were principal at Sale for how many years? Oh, I was a teenager when I started, and I, <laughs> I, was, I was actually there for 36 years. Okay, now in that time, you also found an awful lot of things that worked, and maybe some things that didn't work when it right. came to promoting graduation. What worked? Uh, what works mainly is finding out what students are passionate about and creating programs for them, whether it's the arts, juggling, uh, drama, it doesn't really matter. You find out what they're passionate about and that's what draws them into school. The other thing I think we realized at SAIL and is to create a welcoming environment for students so when they walk in the door they feel like, wow, this school is glad to see me. Doesn't matter how I look, doesn't matter how smart I am, doesn't, none of those things matter. This school cares about me. And, you know, that has so many ramifications for how kids feel about school and coming to school, and that's a huge dropout preventer. If a student is anxious to go to school because there's something there that excites them and they feel respected and cared about by their teachers and by their fellow classmates, it makes all the difference. It stops bullying. You know, it's the number one recipe to stop bullying, to me, is to work on your school climate. Okay, and finally, the biggest impediment that you, you saw during your time? Well, um, some of the legislation that's come down has been difficult to implement. Some of the ideas about teacher evaluation has taken our focus, I think, in the wrong direction, of focusing too much on standardized tests which I'm always harping about. Standardized tests are important, but they should just be one little piece and not the be all end all of what education's about. And that turns kids off and it turns teachers off. Um, there's one thing I'd like to say since I have the floor about some of our rules that our senators could fix. Uh, there's a real impediment right now for high schools particularly to uh, want to bring in students who are far behind, particularly the ones who are real at risk. There's a penalty in the school grading system that if you don't graduate the most at-risk students on time, your school can't be an A. Well, every school wants to be an A, right? So if a student walks in and says, I want to come to your school, and you find out that they're not going to be able to graduate in four years, it's kind of a disincentive to take that student. And 
I think that's a real tragedy. So I'd like to see that one thing fixed if we really want to bring in every child who wants to graduate. I'd like them to fix that. Okay, I hear some lobbying going on well, here too. Well, I have to do that, you know. <laughs> I have to do that. Just a little, we got people in the, in the room that could fix it. Okay, and, and, and we do. We have uh, Senator Bill Monford, who will be joining us in a bit. Uh, Roseanne Wood, longtime uh, principal now, retired from, from Sale High School here in Tallahassee. Let's get some more folks involved here in the conversation, though. You've heard some of the things that have worked as far as promoting alternative tracks for students to get them more engaged, more focused on certain kinds of things that they may be interested in, that they want to try, even down to the middle school level right now. Is that too early to specialize? We know a lot of folks in college, some people who are going to master's programs still don't know what they want to be when they grow up. So is that kind of getting a little bit ahead of ourselves to look at this kind of, of specialization and, and tracking? Yes, ma'am. And your name, please. Miranda. Okay, Miranda. And what do you think? Um, as a graduate, actually, of Lively Academy, I went to Gabby High School in 1998, 97, and I had China, and so I was 17. Well, it's a lot of teenage pregnancy going on now. So with education, girls feel like they have no way out once they have a baby. Um, I went to Lively and I obtained my diploma from there. And like he said, I became a CNA, which is a certified nursing assistant. I worked as a certified nursing assistant for a while and did other things. But now I'm back at Lively pursuing my LPN. So there is alternatives, even if you are a teenage mother or, you know, you still got to get a diploma, but <laughs> you can still, the academies are good because it allows you to see what you want to do. Maybe if you become a CNA, you might realize, I really don't want to be a CNA. I don't want to be a nurse. I want to do something else. So with the different programs, it's, it, like he said, you can probably go into IT or nursing or something else, and you're like, oh, I really like this, and now education is now available to me, and I'm going to have to just get my high school diploma, and I might hate college, but I can go be a welder. <laughs> I don't know. College isn't for every student. Every student doesn't want to go to college. Some want to be carpenters. Some want to open up their own businesses. And yes, they need the groundwork, but college just isn't for every single student. And that's what the senators need to notice. And that's what America needs to notice. And I think we'll be a better country. For Thank that. you so much, Brenda. I, so we get old here. We just had a birthday the other day. And if you're just joining us, this is a simulcast, a special simulcast of American Graduate. And our town hall is on both WFSU-TV and WFSU-FM. We have these great superintendents with us, and let's get to, to them. Let's, let's talk first to um, engaging at-risk youth. And let me throw that open. And, and first, if I could ask uh, Bobby Pierce, who is the superintendent of Wakulla. And uh, here, I'm, I don't want to get back down again. I may not get back up. All right. <laughs> okay, and Superintendent Pierce, as far as how do you handle special needs students and kids with, uh, you know, who are at risk in, in Wakulla County? What programs do you have for them? Well, right now, what I'm really excited about is today we, uh, we unveiled uh, publicly a, a new automotive uh, shop that we've started, an automotive program, and and what I what I, where I'm going with that is that uh, the traditional vocational programs that Lively provides in Leon County, and that we have a partnership with Leon County and work with them, and some of our students do go on campus at Lively. But one of the problems that's happened is a lot of our kids, because of the socioeconomic situation and the economic downturn, that travel up there uh, for whatever reason, uh, they just wanted to stay here. Also, we need our kids local so they can attend their regular classes to get their credits necessary for graduation. Graduation. So we've opened up a satellite uh, auto mechanic shop and a lot of kids that are in, enrolled in that uh, are, are kids that would have been at risk students that would have been potentially kids that might have looked at going a different route. A GED is not a bad program to go into but our goal is to have the high school experience and get that high school diploma. So right now what I'm excited about is a return not only expanding what we've got with career and technical but a return to the traditional vocational programs that are out there that will reach a lot more students that will at, one, at some time be at risk and if they know that that promise is there early in middle school they're going to stay in school 
and they're going to go ahead and go through those programs. So we're working right now with Lively uh, on expanding to welding next year and bringing a welding program down to Wakulla County and setting up another satellite office on that and, and operating that way. I think that over time we're going to find out that, uh, you know, again, the 90s, everybody wanted to go to college. We wanted everybody to go to college, and we've come full circle. Somebody was wearing bell bottoms the other day, I think, and, and we've come full circle. We're back around, back around to vocational, uh, the traditional vocational areas. We need mechanics. We need welders. We need people that are uh, qualified to be uh, heating, heating and air conditioning folks, and they're a good pay for those jobs. So I think that's going to solve some of our dropout issues, and especially keeping more kids on a regular diploma track. So it kind of gets them away from that, oh, what good is a quadratic equation going to do me when I get out into the workforce? They're still going to, they're still going to have to do a lot of that anyway to graduate. But uh, what this does is keeps them there, it hooks them, and keeps them in school. I kind of like what, what she was saying, find out what they're passionate about and keep them in school. And so there are a lot of kids out there that want to learn how to work on a car, and that's a good thing. Yeah, and, and right now there's more computer power in a car than we had in the, uh, the Apollo 11 capsule when it went to that's, the moon. That's correct. Yes, sir. D does any, anyone in the audience have a, a question for Superintendent uh, Pierce while we're, while we're here, while we're talking about this? I think we had someone who wanted to find out about, uh, find out about uh, Career Academy. Uh, let's see, uh, Joy Phillips. I think, uh, I think Joy had a, had a question. Is that right? Let's see, Joy. Here we go. Um, yes, my name is Joy Phillips, um, and I work at the Center for Leadership and Social Change at Florida State. Um, and one of the questions that I had, particularly around programs um, that seem to focus exclusively on college preparation, is a lot of what we see with our kids is that some of them are interested in careers um, outside of and not going directly to college. And so wondering about those programs that focus on college preparation, what they're also doing to help students focus on careers outside of high school. And so I'm glad to see that there are some programs here um, that do that for some of our students so that they have options and know that they have options um, post high school graduation. Okay, may maybe a follow up on that is, how do you help students to determine what the viable options are for them? Uh, it's like going into a cafeteria and you have this huge spread of, you know, wonderful foods and they all look great and oh, look at the dessert table and man, I wish I could get to that first. And, and we know that many folks, as we said before, really don't have a clear direction in their heads of where they want to go or what they want to do. So, uh, Matt McKibben, what, what do you think? Well, I, I hear us talking a lot about programs and programs definitely make a huge impact on, on children, but I think that we may be losing focus on it's individuals um, that are within those programs that really make the differences, I think. Um, you know, individuals, I think we can all remember those special teachers that stepped out and sort of hooked us. Um, and so I, I look towards, you know, mentors or tutors or leaders for those students to really help th the students understand what options are out there, what's best for them, and help give some guidance. You know, I, I think that, again, programs are very important. They give a lot of options and choices, but it's getting those individuals, those people in front of those students that I think is the, the key factor in making that difference. And it, and it can be people from all different facts of life. It could be uh, a, a parent, it could be a neighbor, it could be um, somebody from you know, an organization like Big Brothers Big Sisters or an after school program or 50 Large or a teacher. So it can come from a lot of different variables. Um, but I think that that is a piece that is very vital when we're talking about careers and opportunities for students in the future. So it sounds like we all have to kind of help out. We kind of we, we kind of all got to help out. To be honest with you, you really do. Um, you know, I, I certainly sit here in front of you with a, a career that started off in one way and has wound up completely different. And I can pinpoint a half a dozen people that you know helped guide me along that path. Now. Uh, so I think that's a, a big impact, and uh, certainly having the programs in the schools and in the school districts um, to open up those pathways for those students is very important. Um, but getting those individuals to, uh, to be there and be you know, an influence in their life, I think, is the, the main key uh, in keeping those students in path and getting them to graduate. That's great, great input, Matt. Thank you very, very much. Uh, again, join us on Twitter at WFSU Am Grad as we continue the American Graduate Town Hall. And we do have a question. Uh, how do I find out where career academies are located? Are they on the internet? Are they in the phone book? Are they on the website of the school district or the individual school? How do you find out? 
Is there a single point of contact, a single resource for that? And does it make it tough for students? Uh, yes, Mr. Duckworth, Rod Duckworth joins us here. I think one of the best ways for anybody to find out more about career academies would be to, number one, check with their local schools, school districts, to find out what career academies are available, uh, what options are available for the students. And they can always contact the Florida Department of Education and look at our website uh, for those resources so that we can connect them with the career academies in their local districts. Okay, and Rod, is there a comprehensive listing of those academies on the uh, Department of Education website? I believe so. There are some out there and we can work with individuals when they call in to locate those career academies. Okay, and, and I imagine that that's something that also the school superintendents and at the district level funnel into the Department of Education so we, we have that single point of, of contact. I think we have time for one more question for our superintendents, and let's see who that individual might be who had already submitted an inquiry right here. Virginia Dixon, okay. Uh, Virginia Dixon had a, had a question, I believe, for one of the superintendents. Okay, and Virginia wasn't able to join us. But Okay, let me pose that here for you. What alternative paths are presently available to our students? Are there after-school programs that train students in these paths? We had been talking about these, these um, special offerings kind of during the school day, but are there programs after school? We still have a lot of students who maybe don't have the opportunity to get out at 2.30 or whatever and head on home and there's mom waiting with a plate of cookies and a glass of warm milk. And these kids may have other, other obligations to take them away. Yes, oh, okay, uh, Gwen Thomas from Griffin. Yes, ma'am. I can share just a little bit about the, um, the previous question about the path for students, which leads into the after-school program. I know Leon County has a very extensive choice program, and uh, there's a choice office, there's a choice website. You can visit the Leon County School Board's website and see the options that are available for our programs with choices. Along with that, you may visit different schools which offer either before or after-school programs, and these programs are set up to uh, enhance academics as well as offer enrichment opportunities for the students and that's per school by the programs. These programs are running in the afternoons from about four o'clock in the evening for middle schools and it ends around six o'clock in many of the schools dinner is also served for those students and they have an opportunity to extend learning as well as delve into some of those enriching activities that they can find their niche. Boy, that makes for a long day for teachers, though, doesn't it? It really does, but when you're looking at the difference that we make for our families, our focus at Griffin is we make a difference for families. And when we can keep the students intact, we support the families, it also provides opportunities for families to um, gain new skills, to um, find new career paths for themselves, as well as make sure their children are growing and learning and they're in a safe environment. That's terrific, Gwen. Thank you very much for the input. Appreciate that. We have another tweet that came in asking, are these pathways also helpful for ESL students? Okay, first, who can define ESL? We, okay. <laughs> Give me a, yes, ma'am. Here, into the microphone, please. English for speakers of other languages. Okay. So uh, students who, for whom English is not the primary language, okay? Uh, so what, what programs do we have available there? We are becoming much more diverse here in North Florida, certainly. And that is going to be an ever-growing challenge as we continue to diversify uh, with many, many more folks from other cultures and other heritages coming to join us here. What do we do for the kids who maybe are struggling uh, just to keep up with English? We have all these resources here. What, what are we doing for those kids? Who can, who can address that right now? Okay, let's see. Ah, there we go. Yes, sir, your name, please. Uh, Karthik. Okay, so Karthik. what's available? Um, what's available? So I see, since I am a student myself, I see like in my school there's more um, clubs, as you can say, like Spanish club, French club, and um, all these clubs are geared towards students of this nature because I have a good friend, um, D'Angelo, and he doesn't really know how to speak English fluently. 
and so I see him like um struggle sort of, but my teacher helps him out, and um he has he has like a place to go and kind of be in his niche, so to sp so to speak. Okay, Karthik, would you like to see more of these kinds of things available? Because there are going to be you know kids from all over the place that are coming right. to this area. Right. Um, I think that yeah, um. It's a good environment to be around, like um, clubs, and I mean, I know I can find help around any corner of my school because I like I do tutoring and I was an NHS, and um, I'm I'm currently in a uh, record scientific society and clubs such as that as well. That's fabulous. What do you want to do? Uh, um, not sure. Yet. <laughs> okay, I'm working on it, <laughs> or I'm gonna I'm gonna um. I'm in a, um, I'm geared towards engineering. I'm not sure which um, branch though, mostly computer science though. Cool. I've been training. Good deal. Well, it sounds like you got some alternatives to play off of here tonight, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, let's, let's continue. And besides, um, if you want to contact us again, WFSU Am Grad is the Twitter that you should tweet us to here, American Graduate, and this is our town hall meeting on both WFSU-TV and WFSU-FM. Okay, we've been talking an awful lot about career academies today, and, and they offer one pathway, certainly, to graduation, um, but we also want to talk to a gentleman by the name of Marcus Stallworth, whose pathway went through the Success Academy and also a program called 50 Large. So we want to talk to Marcus about that and see exactly what that did in terms of here. Come on, join us up here, Marcus, so we can get you on camera here. And, and what did that do? How did that change your situation? Uh, 50 Large or Success Academy. Let's start uh, with Success Academy first. Uh, okay? Success Academy, uh, it took me a while to get through school. I was actually behind 10 credits. Uh, wasn't in my right grade, obviously. Um, the faculty there helped me through, you know, getting my grades right. Uh, I joined uh, 50 Large previous before Success Academy, and uh, with 50 Large, they helped me, you know, gain my credits and also take certain classes to get me to my right grade. I remember entering into Success Academy a, a junior, and I was actually supposed to be a senior. Um, I think it took me about the first nine weeks or so to get caught up and end up having all A's and B's every nine weeks, so, you know, that's how I got through. Wow, that, that, and uh, what do you want to do with that now that you, you, um, you went through? Of course, the 50 Large program, which right. was a great focus. For folks who don't know what that is, what, what exactly is 50 Large? Uh, 50 Large, uh, it is actually a game prevention program. I wasn't in the game myself, but um, the things I went through, I was qualified to be part of 50 Large. But um, it's really, you know, to steer young men out of, you know, negative ways and people who don't have other people to look up to, kids who don't have other people to look up to. Um, really, they really help men, well, boys become men, and that's what they certainly did for me. Okay, and uh, building upon all this, where do you want to go? Uh, right now, I'm actually at TCC on the scholarship, uh, New Star Scholarship, and uh, I actually don't know what I'm a, you know, major in. Uh, I actually do encourage kids to have a plan B because your major will always change throughout college. Um, but I'm really leaning towards biomedical engineering and also neurosurgery. But, you know, it's, yeah. You're just keeping <laughs> the options open, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Marcus, and all the best to you, okay? Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay, let's check over on the screen and see what we have here. Why do you think it is so difficult to recruit men to become mentors? And that is directed at a particular person, namely Luis Garcia, who is CEO of Big Brothers, Big Sisters of the Big Band. Come on up, Luis. And it's, what's wrong with us guys? Who knows? We're always looking for a few good men. And, <laughs> and, 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 and and when being in the mentoring world, um, we get a lot of inquiries from families and a lot of single moms or moms working very hard or grandmas, and they come to us saying, please find a man just to be a role model, just to show up, just to be a friend, um, because we, they want the best for their child. And we get a lot of women. This is a very caring community. And we get a lot of women that want to do it. Um, but the men, there's always a need. We have all the mentoring organizations in town have hundreds and hundreds of boys. And when a man does 
uh, step up and, and, and become a role model for a young person, especially in the high school space. Uh, their inspiration turns into aspirations for the kids and gives them a new vision or the new broadened horizon to, to someone else saying, you can do this, you can fulfill your potential. Um, and so we just ask, why not? Why aren't the men showing up? Um, the ones that do are incredible, so we know they can do it. And, and I just throw that question out there. Okay, and, and you've expanded the, actually, the, the range of Big Brothers, Big Sisters of the Big Ben. You need more folks of, I mean, from everywhere now. That's right, everywhere. Uh, it's, it's great that we have the support from the community and more people are asking for mentors. And not just families looking for mentors, the business community is asking for more mentors. The, the business understands that career and college preparation means the future workforce is more trained and more skilled. More skilled and more trained future workforce means higher salaries. Higher salaries means more spending in town. And so there's this cycle that not only gets the families out of poverty, but it continues the economic stimulus. Okay, and I think we said something too about the fact that if you have a well-trained turnkey workforce available to go, it makes your area much more attractive to new business and industry or retaining existing business and industry. That's right, that's right. And we have a talent retention problem in Tallahassee. Let's keep, they go to other towns where they have other jobs. Let's keep those talented people here with more jobs. And so we continue the, the, the cycle uh, with more talented workforce staying in town, more jobs will come to town and then it'll just grow. Uh, Symbiotically. Symbiotically, like that term. Thanks, Lewis. Really appreciate it. Uh, for the educators here, how many folks have had a positive interaction with the community partners, such as Big Brothers, Big Sisters, or the Big Band, or 50 Large, or any of these other? Look at the hands going up. That's, that's terrific. So it does take a village, uh, is what we're kind of saying here when it comes to promoting this entire goal of increasing the number of students who graduate from high school. Okay, well, now we ask how students even begin to sort out what career path they might want to th follow. And we do have a brief video that shows how technology can help in this regard. That, it seems to me, to be sort of like a guidance counselor in a box. I, I don't know. Mike Ferguson joins us now. Mike, is, is such a thing available right now? Can we go out and get this thing? Uh, you can go take a look at the prototype. Um, we have an idea with uh, WFSU, and um, it came up with the prototype that you can take a look at at pathfinder.fcim.org. But the idea, I mean, it's encouraging to me when we have an idea that we can actually build a prototype for and hopefully find the funding to build this thing out to accomplish a lot of the things I've heard here with uh, capitalizing on the interests that the kids have through using a tool that uses the social media. They can look at the reports that are going to be out um, on um, salaries and, uh, you know, like the, uh, the, the economics of the area. Um, Who's graduating from a program? How much money do they make? What did it take to get there? We'll have uh, experts in fields that are interviewed. So if they do want to be a biomedical engineer, there could be one that says, I am one. This is what I had to do to do that. And you can take a look, go down a path, 
find out their off ramps to um, to other areas. Maybe if you don't become that, so it'll track their interests and that sort of thing. So you can take a look at it. This video is there. Uh, we have a, a tour of the prototype, and uh, we are looking for partners that are interested in developing uh, such a tool that uh, I, th I think will help accomplish a lot of these things. So um, if you have any questions, you can uh, later or now or whatever, you can give me a call or go to pathfinder at fcim.org. Okay, that is terrific. Thanks okay. so much, Mike. Uh, uh, teachers, uh, <laughs> principals, uh, superintendents, uh, good idea, you think? Maybe possible. Okay, and and Lynn Cannell, before we move on here, you had a you had a comment you wanted to make. I did. I've been listening tonight, and I was thinking about China's mother's comment that she was not the traditional student. She became a teenage mother, and I'm with Leon County Schools Adult Community Education. We're trying to be known as ACE in the community, and that's the population we work with. The students who perhaps uh, were not successful in the traditional um, environment, and they do drop out of school and we want them to know that that's not the end of their life. They don't earn a GED. They take a GED test. They earn a State of Florida high school diploma. And so they are a high school graduate, graduate just the same as a, a student who comes from Godby or Leon or anywhere else. It's just that their diploma comes from the State of Florida. The gentleman who talked about relationships, we talk about that all the time with our teachers. We tell them no learning takes place without a relationship. You've got to build it. You talked about an ESOL student. Um, we work with the adult uh, English uh, language learners, and we work with them as parents of, who have children in Leon County Schools to help them understand our school system, to help them know how to talk with the teacher, to help them further their children's education. What we want to know is our question, what can we do to help the community know that if you've dropped out of school, it doesn't mean it's the end of your life. We have graduates who teach in the Leon County School System who are nurses in the hospital, who have their own private businesses and are very successful. How can we let the community, let these people know the services is available? How can we get the legislature to understand how to fund and make this source available and to know that we are creating tax-paying citizens? for the state of Florida. That is terrific. Lynn, thank you so much for that comment. I really appreciate that, that input. We have another question here that came in to us uh, via the Twitter machine. We'll wait for that to come up. Are local businesses helping with these academies? And do students get the opportunity to practice their career academy skills, ostensibly in those very workplaces? So could, could, do we take the, the theoretical and what has been taught and then put it on the ground actually in, in the workforce with partners who are in the business community? How often does that happen and, and who, could, who could tackle that one? Yeah, Greg Thomas. The Wakala High Medical Academy has partnered with our hosp local hospitals here in Tallahassee with local nursing homes and they really work well with us and they enjoy having our students there and students really enjoying being there and hearing those kids after they have those experiences, it really seals the deal for a lot of them. It really helps them to decide that that's the direction that I really want to go in because I've been able to help people. They, they get the opportunity to be right there with the people that are struggling every day and they enjoy it. Well, that, that's the local medical community and local props medical. to them for, for stepping forward and for doing that. But is, is it useful to have other businesses as well? Superintendent James. Yes, we are fortunate enough to have um, a biotechnology uh, academy at East Gadsden. And we have Engelhardt, who's very, they're a mining company. They're very, very good at partnering with us and providing uh, own, own site experiences for the students. So we appreciate that. Oh, well, that's terrific. And, and let's see, we have Shelly Bell from Agabi too. Um, in our Academy of Finance, they partner with local banks as well as United Way of the Big Ben to be part of the BEST program. And our students actually um, prepare taxes for community members. Last year they did over 100 and with their average savings to the families of $1,700 per return. And so that's one way that our students are giving back to the community, but they're also working with United Way of Big Bend and local area banks to get certified as students 16, 17 years old to prepare taxes. And, and full disclosure, I had my taxes done at uh, Godby this past year. <laughs> and, and they saved me a lot of money, I could <laughs> Thanks very much, Shelley. Well, that brings us to a point of I guess sort of overview of the entire situation here today because 
as we know, in Florida, not much happens if the Florida legislature doesn't in some way, shape, form, or fashion get involved, or at least doesn't get, uh, should we say, prohibitive, if we can use that. And we are joined by our District 3 state senator, who is Bill Monford, and filling in for uh, Senate President Don Gates is Mr. Fuller. And so are you, are you going to gavel us into, uh, into order right now, sir? Oh, no, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we wanted also to bring in Chancellor Rod Duckworth in, into this conversation as well, so we can open this up a, a little bit more. Um, if, if we could go here, Zach, I think you had a question here. If we could open it up here with sort of the audience. You'd, you'd wanted to know about a, this tiering. We talked about this before, where it's not just pure academic. It's almost getting back to, if anyone is old enough to remember, where you had um, shop classes for like a Votech program, and you had, a, you had business courses, and then you had academic courses, and it was kind of a tiered system. We're kind of going back to that right now. So. What you, here, here, come on, stand up. And uh, what would you like to, to ask the, the senators, if you will? My question was about home economics. You know, I work with kids who are struggling to get out of high school. So we prepare for ACT test prep to help those kids out. And so for those kids who fall through the cracks or the crevices, I want to know, are we going to go back down to mainstream and offer home ec again and offer those kids courses throughout the day? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that, that thank question. And, and thank you, Tom, for and WFSU for doing this evening. And thank everyone for being here. This has been a very enlightening, but I must add, almost uh, would, would say a very encouraging conversation as well. Uh, I hope you show this over and over and over again uh, for, for it to be seen, uh, hopefully, throughout the state. Uh, to answer your question, I think, let, let me give you just a little, a little background. It's been mentioned here tonight. Uh, I think quite one of the problems that we have encountered a generation or so ago was the fact that we have somehow we slipped into the notion that if a child does not go to college that child is not successful uh, and that's, that's couldn't be farther from the truth uh, as a high school principal I have tried uh, to encourage some of my students and the parent to take another option uh, and and some were offended quite frankly said you think my child is not capable of going to college and the answer that uh, no they're quite capable uh, they just don't want to sit in the seat that long or don't want to go to college. Uh, there, are, there are other opportunities there. And I'm very proud of the fact that when I look back on my own career, uh, there are some very, very successful people, not only in this community, uh, but, but throughout the state and country, uh, that did not go to college. They took a, an option, a route, if you will, that was similar to what we're discussing here uh, this evening. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question in just a minute, but I got, I got to get this out. I want to uh, thank President Gates. Uh, President Gates, as you know, was a school superintendent. Uh, he was a school board member. So he came into the Senate uh, with a very uh, clear, clear image and in mind what needed to be done. Uh, he had that background. And as, as Senate president, along with Dr. Fuller's assistance, we were able to, to pass the Cape Bill. And the Cape Bill, as Superintendent Pond said a minute ago, is one of the most important pieces of legislation that we have passed in a number of years. Uh, we're not going backwards. We're simply altering our path, which is absolutely wonderful for children. It helps them get on the right path. It helps them get on the path that they're interested in and makes them quite capable of entering the workforce with skills or entering the workforce continuing their education or going directly to college. So through the Cape Bill, which quite frankly we know needs some tweaking and we'll, we'll improve it, but it's certainly on the right path. So to answer your question about home ec, what we've done throughout the years, we've slipped away from some of those specific courses. What we believe is, is important is to be able to teach those skills uh, and identify those students that need those skills well in advance of them leaving, leaving us. For example, there are some, I think the question was, is middle school too early? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Middle school is not too early to help our children to identify those skills that they need. But I also have to, to, to remind you that there's a limit. There's a limit to what school districts can do with the funding that they're given. What we have to do is to make absolutely sure that we focus once again on the need for guidance counselors, if you will, or other personnel in the school to be able to help these students as they move through the system. That's what's important. Second thing, we need to make sure that we work with our colleges of education and others 
who are helping prepare young people to be teachers and others in the school to help make sure that they understand where we're going and where Florida is headed in the future. And I think we can do that. Third thing is we need to make sure that we engage the business community. I, I, I'm, I'm hurrying here. I had Tom <laughs> doing his head like that when we hurry. Uh, the business community is a critical, critical piece of this. We've got to engage that. We've got examples all over the state, certainly right here in, in North Florida, where the business community is engaged. And I want to thank uh, to Chancellor Duckworth and, and Chancellor Hanna for the job they've done trying to pull our, our school districts and the colleges and other groups together to, uh, to achieve this. Okay, goal. thank you, Senator. Uh, and Dr. Fuller, just only have one moment left, which one minute actually. What do you see as the top priority going into the 2014 legislative session when it, when it comes to education overall? To, I want to thank Senator Mumford for his leadership with uh, this program and obviously President Gates with his vision. I think the next transition is to realize that it's not all about college or it's and. And for those kids who are earning industry certs, we have 180 industry certs in the CAPE Act, 67 are articulated to college credit. So as the student acquires the cert, you lean over and say, by the way, you've just earned three college credits if you go register at your community college. And just that simple awakening that it's not one or the other, that he can or she could take both paths, it's making a huge difference. And if you ask Rod, Florida right now, I think, is a national leader in breaking the code that it's not about one or the other anymore. It's simply about education. And education leads to jobs. And if we go back to the introduction, when the governor said kids want to know about jobs, if I turn to the superintendents, it's probably the number one thing in their conversation at high schools now is about what kind of job can I get to. It's uh, probably driven, driving this group more than any group we've seen in, in a couple of decades. Dr. Fuller, thank you so much. Folks, this has been an absolutely incredible conversation tonight. Thank you all for coming and for participating in. My gosh, we could go on for hours. Unfortunately, time does not allow. So thanks once again for coming and for your input. To our viewers, thank you so much, and also our listeners over WFSU-FM for joining us tonight. Please take a minute, if you could, and visit wfsu.org slash American Graduate and tell us what you've learned from this evening's presentation. You can also visit our partner page on wfsu.org slash American Graduate and learn more about how you can be involved in helping a student find their direction. You can be a mentor. You can invite students to intern at your place of business. You, you might just give an afternoon of your time to offer some career guidance. And parents, if, if your child is in need of some direction, please check out our page also and see if any of our partners might be able to help. There are just so many approaches, but the goal is all the same. We want all of our students on a path to a successful life. And it all starts with a high school diploma. Again, thank you for taking part, for listening, for watching. This has been the American Graduate Town Hall. Thank you for being a part of it. American Graduate Community Town Halls are part of American Graduate Let's Make It Happen, a public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcast.